Hi, this is Ranjana, Global Head of Quality and Pharmacovigilance for Dr. Reddy's. Digitalization is the need of the hour for all of us in pharma, whether it be quality control, whether it be manufacturing, whether it be warehouse, because today's world is all about productivity, about being innovative, and there's so much fierce competition. So I think if we don't take note and cognizance of the use of digitalization, I think we'll be left behind. And this is for every company. In the quality control lab, it is particularly important because that's where a lot of variables, you know, there's a lot of testing. Basically, there's a lot of testing. And the variety of equipment we have, if it's not all configured together, if it's not feeding into each other or feeding from another digitalized uh, platform, you don't really understand what is going on because you need to have from soup to nuts. You want to see how is your batch manufactured during batch manufacturing. Can you digitalize in a manner where you can actually see, catch it early, that this batch or this lot is not going to make it. It's not running within the parameters of the batch records. It should be, it's running at the upper end, lower end. You want it to be central. Then that same concept comes into the laboratory. When you're testing the product, if you have digitalized equipment and your process is digitized, so again, difference between digitization and digitalization, they both come together. I think it's very helpful, it's efficient, it's an innovative to work, and you don't have to worry about compliance or mistakes. It'll all be taken care of because it's in the process, it's embedded in there, and you'll have repeatability, consistency, regardless of who the person is doing the job. And we know attrition is so high here. You don't have to worry so much if you have been able to digitalize your processes. And again, it's not only lab, it's lab and manufacturing. So I encourage that for all of us in pharma. So the big measures that we have for quality and compliance, right? what is compliance? Compliance is, did you do? what you said you were going to do, is it in writing, and do you do that each time? And then most importantly is the evidence. Do I have evidence to show that this is what my procedure was, this is what the ask was, and this is what I did, and each step in pharma, we have details, and there has to be many, many details, and all those details have to be captured in a manner that will remain permanent, so to speak. And that can be retrieved. So I think it's of utmost importance. I think the difference between, and I'm biased, right? I'm from pharma, 42 years in pharma. So the difference between pharma and other industries, just for a moment, is we're dealing with human lives. We're dealing with sick people. Even if you're taking a nutritional supplement, you are having so much faith on the bottle or whatever the delivery system may be, whether it's injection, patch, whatever, you have faith in the medicine that has been given to you by your physician. So it's up to each one of us to, it's a, in my mind, it's a fiduciary responsibility for all of us that work in pharma, even aviation. You know, when you fly, you don't think about whether the pilot is licensed or not. You just take it for granted. So I think there are certain sectors that you just cannot mess with. You cannot take it lightly. And these tools that digitalization helps us, makes us stronger, makes us better, and of course, makes us more competitive. So as we digitalize on one end, right, there are people who think of the human good. There are people who think of how I can take advantage of the human good. We've all heard about cyber security in your phone, in your, at home. We used to have alarms in our house. So cyber security is now my data is all digitalized. Is it secure? Can somebody from the outside who has malified intentions get into it? It's basically my house, my fortress. So cyber security measures have to be taken. They have to be taken seriously. Governance has to be there. You have to have the right procedures, policies, and you have to ensure that all this is working. 
You can't just have it and it sits somewhere. I encourage each one of us to check to, again, evidence. Is this working? Can, if somebody hacks me, what will I do? How long will I be? What is my downtime? My batch is being manufactured. What am I going to do? So business continuity plan is extremely important and how to act and react in a cyber attack is extremely crucial. It can happen anytime, anywhere. I believe it's 2,000 to 3,000 attacks per month. God forbid if it happens. How long are you going to be down for? For business must continue. And the data that you have saved or the data that is being saved, can you bring it back? So if we don't have, if we have not thought through, and it's one of the biggest global threats today, then we'll be left behind and there'll be a lot of loss. And any loss to any company is not good. So as a formal leader, as a quality leader, I think working with startups is extremely important because this is again my belief is startups have people who are innovative, people who think out of the box. Now in pharma, pharma is an old industry and we're always afraid to think out of the box because we always worry about the regulator. But it is not so, it should not be. How can I do the same thing faster, better, more productive? And I think startups, are, that is their business, is startup. How can I take what is existing, turn it around using technology, using good evidence-based science and get the results faster, cheaper, consistent and fortified. So it's a tall ask, but I think startups, are, are, they have a place in our industry because that's who I'd look to or towards is Help me do the same thing in a better way. I can be more productive. Innovate.